Hi chess fans, we look at a game between Livon Aronian with white and a guy called Daniel Cordery with black. Daniel is an international master from South Africa and actually the best player in South Africa. The game was played in the World Cup in Tbilisi in 2017. Livon played c4, knight f6, knight c3, d5, c takes, knight takes, g3. So this is a um, English opening with an early d5 and then the fianchetto of the bishop with some um, topics that we might also know from the Catalan. g6, bishop g2, knight b6, d3, bishop g7, bishop e3, knight e6. And this is a very interesting decision by Aronian. He is giving up his light squared bishop and weakening all these squares, but in return he gets this pawn structure. So Levon is uh, creating some disbalance in the position early in the game. And after queen d2, ask the question to the black king, okay, where do you want to go? If you castle um, short, I'm going to go and exchange this bishop. Um, the bishop is now pinned against the rook, and black gets to exchange this bishop and gets attack on the king. And if you cast along, this position is already very weak. So black plays h6 and answers this very principally, but potentially this can become weak. After rook c1, bishop e6, knight to f3, bishop h3, trying to take advantage of the fact that the light square bishop is not there and threatening to go to g2, attacking the knight and the rook. The rook protects his pawn, and white's king is also stuck in the middle now. And after bishop g4, knight h4, knight to d5, knight a4, we get to our first training question. It's a positional question. Uh, should white retake with the queen or with the pawn? Okay, so if white retakes with the queen, um, the pawn structure stays intact. But let's have a look at this position. Um, this rook is um, now very bad. Um, how can white ever develop this rook? Um, white would have to play something that is weakening his structure even more, bringing the king up and then developing the rook. So that's a disadvantage. And on top of it all, this square is very weak. So the queen is now on e3, but <coughs> um, it can easily be attacked. And once the queen moves away, the square can potentially become weak. On the other hand, <coughs> if white takes with the f-pawn, he controls the d4 square and allows um, his rook to develop to f1, maybe in the future. So Levon made the interesting decision to take with the pawn. Game continued castle, b3, queen d6, queen c2. <coughs> White is getting ready to attack these weak pawns. And after rook a d8, our next training question, tactical. Can White take the pawn here on c6? <coughs> okay, so White wins a pawn, but black has the resource g5. Attacking the um, um, knight, and if, for example, the knight moves to f <coughs> to f3, black can take the queen and take with the bishop and penetrate here by taking this um, d3 pawn, threatening check and this and, and winning the pawn <coughs> and um, threatening with the check also to potentially win this pawn. And if the king moves up, um, black can bring his rooks in and um, has a strong attack against white king. And if after g5 white decides to take the queen, black can retake here with um, the best is with the e pawn because this knight is still attacked. And if this knight moves away to play c5, and um, in this case, um, white is a pawn up, but these knights are actually very bad. Um, this knight here cannot really get so easily into the game anymore. 
and the same goes true for this knight. So all of the squares are controlled. And on the other hand, um, black's bishops are very active. Um, and also the rooks can be activated more quickly. Those rooks here are still disconnected. And they are blocked here by this um, pawn. So um, Levon Aronian decided not to play this. Um, because uh, black would get strong compensation for the pawn. Instead he played queen to c5, and the idea is that after g5, the knight now has the square where he is much more active on f5, and after bishop takes, queen takes. White can still attack these weak pawns later in the game, but now has much more active pieces. <coughs> okay, so... Um, very interesting, the queen goes to c5 to control the square rather than uh, taking the pawn. Okay, um, black plays queen um, e6 to threaten um, g5 again because the queen is now also controlling the square. But now white plays knight um, to g2. And another tactical question here, what if the, white, what if the knight would just stay here? What if the rook, for example, went to f1 simply on the open file? Okay, black has the strong attack bishop to d4, and the idea is that if pawn takes, it's mate. This is another threat in the position, and so after um, knight to g2, white is controlling and protecting this pawn, and at the same time, um, the knight cannot be threatened by g5 anymore. Black plays g5 nonetheless. And now white takes the pawn. Um, g5 uh, is not uh, bad anymore, so now white can simply take the pawn. Black does not want to exchange queens, um, but white would be happy to. And after queen d6, queen c4, bishop e6, attacking the queen. <coughs> white again is, would be happy to exchange queens because then um, the fact that the king is stuck in the middle would be not so bad anymore. And after queen a6, uh, another training question, tactical training question, what to do with this queen here on c5? Look at the candidate moves and make a decision what is the best move in this position. Okay, queen takes this pawn maybe, would be a terrible mistake because this rook is not protected, so if the queen moves, um, like the queen is actually not having any squares as well, so um, the queen is attacked and cannot go anywhere, so the best is that the queen takes. Even if the queen could go away, the rook on c1 would be attacked with check. Okay, so this pawn cannot be taken. What about this pawn? Okay, in this position, black has queen a5 check, and after king f2, queen f5 check, king e1, and queen h3. So, moving the queen away here allows the black queen this check, check maneuver and penetrating in the position here. And um, why is it so bad if the queen penetrates in there? Well, the queen is attacking the h2 pawn now. And maybe white could um, get some attack himself and win a pawn here. But um, black can either play queen h2 right away or maybe kick the queen first and then um, attack this rook. And because the rook is attacked and the rook cannot move because the knight would fall, if the king approaches, then black will simply win a piece because this knight cannot uh, go away now and um, cannot be protected otherwise, and black will win the piece. Okay, so a lot of interesting motives here in this position. Both of these pawns cannot be taken. Um, so what if white just leaves the queen where it is? For example, king f2 with the idea of tucking the king away and activating the rook. Well, turns out this queen is a tactical liability and black can activate this rook. If the queen now drops back, um, 
Black has successfully activated his rook. The game continues, nothing bad has happened, but this rook is now in an active square. And for example, after bishop d7, activating the rook and tucking the king away, black is already threatening things like this, and ready to attack this pawn, so this rook can be put to good use. Okay, <clears throat> so Levon decided to play queen to b4 and the idea is to tuck the king the queen away so the answer to the question what to do with the queen to tuck it away safely because where it is right now it is just a tactical liability so rook b8 the queen goes to d2 well protected and the game continues <coughs> queen d6 knight c5 knight gets activated and attacks the bishop bishop d5 queen c2 and after e5 what should white do? Strategic training question. What could be a good configuration of pieces for white? Okay, Levon played king f2 with the idea of playing the rook to f1 and tucking the king on g1. Very good strategic plan. Black moves the queen, the queen, uh, the king out of uh, potential checks. White continues with his plan, and black pushes the f4 pawn. And what's the idea behind this move? Can white not, not simply win a pawn? G takes, G takes, and E4. <coughs> white is a pawn up, but black argues as compensation for the pawn I have some attack on the king. And black pushes F3 so that after takes, black could take with check. But white takes with the pawn here. And in this position, um, black decided to play queen takes h2. And tactical question, can white not take this bishop? Okay, if white were to play e takes d5, black actually has a draw. Sacrificing the rook here, and then rook f8. The one rook gets sacrificed, and another rook comes in. And the point is that um, after king e3, for example, queen g3, the king cannot go up because it's mate. So the king has to go down, and black wins back the piece. And it turns out um, black has a perpetual here because if um, the king um, goes to e1 or goes to e1 or d1, there's a mate. And if the king goes up, there is checks here. And the king cannot escape along this diagonal. And so um, after taking the bishop here, this rook sacrifice gives black the draw. This perpetual. So that's why um, white instead plays king e1, now threatening to take the bishop. But black simply plays the bishop to d4. And again, tactical question can white now take this bishop? Okay, the answer is no, because black has a draw here as well. After rook g8, attacking the knight, white cannot, attack with, con cannot protect with this rook, because this bishop here is controlling the diagonal. And if the knight moves away, for example to e3, the knight cannot move to any other square, because it would simply be taken. And black would be better, or the position would be equal, because the white king is very vulnerable and the pawn structure is weak. So knight e3 is the only square for the knight, but then black can play queen to e5, pinning the knight against the king, and then winning back the piece like this. And the pawn, and the position is equal. Okay, <clears throat> so that's why um, in this position um, white played queen to d2, 
And the point is that if now rook g8, the knight can go to f4 because the queen is protecting this square. And that's why um, black now played the bishop to g8. Note that the bishop doesn't go here, for example, because then there's a double attack of the knight on the rook. So the bishop stays on this diagonal and moves to um, g8 so that it doesn't block the rook and it cannot be attacked here on e6. And after knight d7, it seems like white is attacking both of the rooks. And indeed, the game continued. Rook bd8 takes, takes, and white is winning. White has just won an exchange, and uh, black is losing. But there is a move here in this position, and this is the last tactical training question of this video. Um, black has a draw here. Can you think of the motive, or maybe calculate some variations and see if you find the draw? Okay, as always, we want to look at all the checks. So one candidate move has to be queen to g3. And obviously the queen would be taken and the rook would be taken as well. So all this would be um, holding the draw. Let's have a look at this position. Um, even better than taking here would be taking with the rook on f3 because now the rook, the queen, and the bishop are attacking this rook, which is pinned against the queen, and black will win. Um, <clears throat> so the king has to go away. This check can not be blocked by the queen on the rook. And if the king goes to d1, <coughs> black has rook takes f3, and the point is that this rook is now attacking the rook, so if the knight takes, the rook takes um, with check, and if the king goes up here, it's already very dangerous for white because white would lose the queen. So um, white has to take this rook, and then the queen can take with check. And after queen e2 takes, takes, rook d8, <coughs> because this rook was going in here with tempo, this rook can now go up. Um, go attack the knight or go out of the attack of the knight and the position is equal. Um, if in this position um, the king doesn't go to d1 but moves up to e2, black can even win the game. Maybe you can see the win for black. Well, it's very clear that black can first take the piece here and then the king um, can move to e1. Black has to check on g3. If the king <clears throat> goes to d1, it would be even worse because the queen can take the rook, so the white king has to maintain coordination with the rook. But now queen g3 check, king e2, rook takes, and after rook takes, black is gonna win the rook. The motive here is how the queen and the bishop coordinate and the rook is only protected by the king, so if the king goes away, um, black will win the rook, and the rook cannot go in between because the bishop is controlling the square. So, and after king e1, queen takes, and knight takes. Now, um, black has material up, but we will see that the bishop pair uh, can uh, be a very strong attack on the king. And the moves are very forced as well. Bishop e3, attacking the queen and pinning the rook. And now um, the queen is going to c3 with check, so the king has to move up. The rook moves up because it's attacked by the bishop and controls the squares, so there's no mate here. And now the point is that white doesn't have any checks, and black simply activates the bishop pair to mate the king. So for example, after the queen eats this pawn here, we have this check, the king moves up, the bishop just drops to g5, and it's doing its job there in the same way as it is doing on e3, making sure the king cannot get away. And if the queen moves, moves here, there's the check, 
and the king can only go to f3 and we already win the queen in the game and if the queen here is not so greedy and eats this pawn but uh, goes to um, e5 because it wants to give a check here and exchange itself for the black queen the queen simply goes to h1 and gives a check making sure that there can be no exchange of queens rook to g5 and white has this check but the uh, bishop simply goes in between here and there are no more checks for um, white here all the squares are controlled by the bishop this is a big advantage of the bishop pair when it's organized like this um, very strong for the attack but also strong for the defense at the same time and bishop h5 king f2 and um, bishop to f6 holding all the squares together and threatening queen to f3 and the mate comes soon so in the game after so 97 black played rook um, b to d8 and after the uh, loss of this exchange the game continued for a few moves but in this position um, Daniel from South Africa resigned and Livon was the winner um, so um, I hope you learned a lot from these nine training questions thanks a lot for watching and see you again next time